Truth unveiled here, and today I have some very interesting stuff to share with you today. I'm going to be talking about all of the banking hacks that have been going on, as well as talk about Anonymous and the real nefarious agenda behind this, because this is a worldwide event that's starting to spiral out of control. Now I'm here at Express, and it says, this is just the beginning. Anonymous hackers take down nine banks in 30 days cyber attack. Hacking group Anonymous claim they have taken down central banks in Germany, Greece, and in Cyprus as they carry out a 30-day worldwide cyber attack. And later on, I'm going to tell you the real agenda behind this, if they're the even ones so-called hacking anything, because it all it could all be made up. So we want to keep that in our minds for later on. But it goes on to say, the activist hacking group who have joined forces with fellow hackers, Ghost Squad attackers, are targeting bank websites across the world in a coordinated strike called Operation Icarus. And we're going to go over that and the bigger implication behind that, the hackers took the Bank of Greece offline for a few minutes. A Bank of Greece official said the attack lasted for a few minutes and was successfully tackled by the bank's security systems. The only thing that was affected by the denial of service attack was our website. And like I said, later on, I'll go over the bigger agenda behind all this. But it says, Anonymous originated in 2003, adopting the Guy Fa a mask as their symbol for online hacking. The cyber attackers said in a statement to AnonHQ.com, this is just the beginning. We won't stop until all focus is back on the banks where it belongs and all to big to jail institutions are held accountable for their crimes. Oh, you mean all of them? What about the Zionists? Let's keep going. Now that we are uniting our groups, it will only be a matter of time before the whole international bank cartel who are responsible for worldwide economic terrorism can expect to expect us. Remember, problem, reaction, solution. Days later, the website of the Central Bank of Cyprus also briefly came under cyber attack. The Central Bank's website came under some form of a denial of service attack, a spokeswoman said on Friday via email. Now, now mind you, all of this is happening on a Friday as well, and it's being reported on a Friday. Why is that so important? Let's keep going. She she added the attack resulted in some delays in user connections, but generally the website could handle the anticipated number of users for the day. The group also claimed they have taken down the central banks of New Zealand, Montenegro, and France in recent days, as well as the Agorzny Financial Services Commission. Notice how it's all everywhere in Europe and New Zealand and places like that. I hope this is ringing some alarm bells. It goes on to say Operation Icarus comes as research reveals two-thirds of large British businesses have experienced a cyber attack or breach in the last 12 months. Findings from the Cybersecurity Breaches Survey undertaken by Ipsos Mori for the government show a quarter of large firms experiencing a cyber breach did so at least once a month. In light of the findings, businesses are now being urged to better protect themselves. The Digital Economy Minister Ed Vasey said the UK is a world-leading digital econom economy and this government has made cybersecurity a top priority and I'm gonna like I said later on I'm gonna talk about Operation Icarus and the bigger agenda and why this is so important and why this hasn't been getting much attention and why it needs to get more attention and more people need to know about it because there's a bigger nefarious agenda behind all this but it goes on to say too many firms are losing money data and consumer confidence with the vast number of cyber attacks it's absolutely crucial businesses are secure and can protect their data it was also revealed that seven out of the 10 attacks on all firms involved viruses, spyware, or malware could have been prevented and how only a fifth of businesses have a clear view of the dangers of sharing information with third parties. Now remember, this is what they're telling us. We don't even know if they're actually telling us truth. Not only that, but what problem, reaction, solution, please keep that in your mind as we continue to go along. Now, it's no surprise that this would take place around the same time as we're seeing all these bail-ins being enforced in Europe, as well as all of the banking glitches that have been going on in America and other several places within the past few months alone. Huh, I wonder what they're getting ready for. Is that a coincidence? And you can watch my other videos to learn more about these things. But here I am 
at the Free Thought Project, and it says, Anonymous takes nine central banks offline, unleashes massive assault on global banking cartels, so to speak. That's what they want us to believe. But it says, after a call to arms, the anonymous campaign against the banking industry up Icarus seems to be gaining major momentum, as eight more financial institutions have been taken down after the initial attack on the Central Bank of Greece, followed by a similar DDoS attack on the Central Bank of Cyprus. According to a video released in conjunction with Up Icarus, the attack on the Bank of Greece marked the beginning of what they call a 30-day campaign against central bank sites across the world. This massive push, according to the video, aims to strike at the heart of the empire by once again throwing a wrench into the machine. And notice how they're using controlled opposition to do that. You heard me. Let's keep going. And some of the most recent attacks over the weekend, hackers report targeted the Central Bank of the Dominican Republic, the Dutch Central Bank, the Central Bank of Maldives, and Guernsey Financial Services Commission, according to the official Op Icarus Twitter account. Now you can see what it says, so it talks about the Guernsey Financial Services Commission, and this was back on Friday, May the 6th of all days. Very interesting and suspicious indeed. Then it goes on to say the National Bank of Panama and the Central Bank of Kenya were also reportedly targeted a day later, according to hacking news publication Hack Red, And it, you can read more about that here from their Twitter feed as well around Sunday. Wow, interesting that it's all on the weekend. Very interesting. Then it says what began as an anonymous operation has now become a joint op between anonymous and the ghost squad hackers with reported GSH members siege tweeting about taking the central bank of Bosnia Herzegovina offline and providing a screenshot to verify. And of course they have a screenshot here. What day Friday again wow and then of course Bank of Bosnia what are they getting ready for that is the question you should be thinking about and I know I say that in pretty much all my videos but I'm trying to get you to think of the bigger agenda that's going on here and it says the Twitter account ban offline also reported the Central Bank of Mexico had succumbed to a DDoS attack by the hacking collective so Central Bank of Mexico and this was on Friday too anonymous has also released a list of institutions that the collective plans to target, which is divided into four sections, websites that are associated with the U.S. Federal Reserve, the International Monetary Fund, or the IMF, sites owned by the World Bank, and over 150 sites associated with national banks around the plane or around the world. Oh, why would they, why would they want to hack websites associated with the U.S. Federal Reserve? The question should be, why can't they hack the U.S. Federal Reserve itself? That should be the question we should be wondering, because I know the answer, but let's keep going. And I'm sure many of you out there know the answer to that question as well. And we'll go over that in a minute. But it says, thus far, in less than a week, Op Icarus Bank hackers have now hit 10 of the financial institutions they've listed in an online manifesto. But questions remain as to whether these elite hackers will be able to bypass the intense security measures of the more prestigious institutions on their target list. Because remember, problem reaction solution. So they, as in your government, cause the problem. And then what are their reactions? Oh, we need sec increased security measures. Oh, we need biometrics to fight off this threat. Do you see the bigger agenda? Oh, but it's bigger than that. Let's keep going. But the agenda just keeps going and keeps going because here I am at CNBC and it's no surprise that they even have a subcategory all dedicated to cybersecurity because what agenda are they trying to push subliminally? But it says hackers versus bank battle heats up because is it really a battle or is it all staged planned ahead of time? But it says Anonymous has launched the 30-day attack against all central banks and major financial institutions that activist hacking group warned this week after recent strikes on several major banks around the world by different hackers. Anonymous claimed responsibility for a cyber attack on the National Bank of Greece on Tuesday, just a week after Qatar National Bank suffered a major data breach attributed by the media to a Turkish group called Buskurt Hackers. Interesting. In March, the Bangladesh Central Bank reported $100 million stolen from its account at the Federal Bank of New York after a weekend break, according to media reports. The Bangladesh Central Bank said hackers had transferred the money to bank accounts in the Philippines 
Philippines and Sri Lanka. Of course, like I said, this is what they're telling us. We don't know if they're actually doing this. We don't know if the banks are the ones conspiring with the government to do this and then tell us and give us this false information. But I want you to see the bigger agenda and what they're really getting ready for. Now it says an unnamed official from Greece's central bank told Reuters on Wednesday that the bank's website had suffered a denial of service attack on Tuesday. This came after Anonymous announced the start of a 30-day campaign against central bankers around the world in a YouTube video and it started around May 5th, May 6th. Wow, that goes all the way to around June 6th. Very interesting. Is that a coincidence? Then it goes on to say the 30-day campaign. Operation Icarius has moved into the next stage for today. We have continually taken down the website of the Bank of Greece. This marks the start of the 30-day campaign against central banks around the world. The group which adopts the so-called Guy Fa mask as its symbol for hacking said on Tuesday. In a later video, Anonymous extended its intended targets to include MasterCard and Visa, Bank of International Settlements, all central banks, the IMF, and the London Stock Exchange, and every major banking system. What about the Federal Reserve and what about the Rothschild banks? They forgot to mention that, didn't they? But And, and then what? MasterCard and Visa, why do they need to hack those when the government's already doing it through bail-ins and banking glitches that we've been seeing in the past how many months now? But it goes on to say our message is clear. We will not let the banks win. We will be attacking the banks with one of the most massive of attacks ever seen in the history of Anonymous, the group said. Now, some of you may be wondering, oh, well, this sounds good. You know, they're attacking the banks. They're finally going after the bankers. This is a good thing, isn't it? Oh, but when you understand the bigger agenda, then you start to understand exactly what they're getting ready for and just who Anonymous really is. Now, I'm here at the International Business Time of India, and it says the Anonymous Hacking Collective has threatened a slew of financial institutions, including the London Stock Exchange, PayPal, and NASDAQ as part of a 30-day cyber assault called Operation Icarus. And we're going to go over this and where this name really comes from and what this name really means and the bigger agenda behind it. Now, it goes on to say, in a video statement posted on YouTube on the 4th of May, 2016, the notorious group of hacktivists said, we will not let the banks win. We will be attacking the banks with one of the most massive attacks ever seen in the history of Anonymous. It continues, we will be giving many tools to each and every Anon all over the world and we will be holding down PayPal, MasterCard, Visa, NASDAQ, Bank of International Settlements, all central banks, IMF, London Stock Exchange, and every major banking system will be targeted by Anonymous. But just who is Anonymous and who's really behind Anonymous? Let's keep going. The news comes after hackers successfully disrupted the website of the Greek Central Bank by using a distress distributed denial of service cyber attack or DDoS. This method is frequently deployed by hackers and used to overwhelm a web server with traffic in order to knock it offline. The motivation, according to the hackers responsible, was to protect alleged corruption in the so-called banking system. And then it also says what they make a very cryptic statement here where they say Olympus will fall. That reminds me of the movie what Olympus has fallen. It also reminds me of its sequel London has has fallen as in time for destruction? Could that be the symbolism in the coding that they're trying to depict to us? Is that what they're trying to tell us when you decode the message? That's what it sounds like. It's time to wake up and see what time it is because they're telling us what time it is. But the question is, do you know the bigger agenda behind all this? When you decode the bigger symbolism and the bigger messaging and the deeper messaging behind all this, then you start to understand the bigger agenda because why would they use the code name Operation Icarus and, and unless there is what a bigger agenda behind all this. Now, I'm here at Wikipedia to talk more about this Greek mythology. Now it says in Greek mythology, Icarus, and I apologize if I'm butchering that, the Latin spelling conventionally adopted in English is the son of the master craftsman, David Daedalus, who is the creator of the labyrinth, often depicted in art, Icarus and his father attempt to escape from Crete by means of wings, let's keep that in mind, that his father constructed from feathers and wax. Icarus's father warns him 
first of complacency and then of hubris, asking that he fly neither too low nor too high, so the sea's dampness would not clog his wings or the sun's heat melt them. Icarus ignored his father's instructions not to fight too close to the sun whereupon the wax in his wings melted and he fell into the sea this tragic theme of failure at the hands of hubris contains similarities to that of python now what's interesting about this is that it reminds me and when you look at the depictions of ikerus and you just look at different pictures you start to see that it resembles quite closely what it resembles that of a phoenix and what rising out of the ashes the phoenix rising out of the ashes it represents what the tragic theme of failure, but rising out of that failure. Hello, the new world orders what they're getting ready for. And this is just more elite and the of the Illuminati pushing this agenda and pushing this messaging of what? Order out of chaos, rising out of the ashes. I hope you see that. Not only that, but it's interesting that he's the son of the creator of the Labyrinth. You can also say this is what? represents what the sun god but also it represents confusion uh, the, the labyrinth represents a maze difficult to find the exit hello it's a giant code for what getting ready for the illuminati getting ready for the capping of the pyramid the capping of the new world order destruction even at the door that's what it's symbolizing and that's why they're pushing this big operation because we know darn well who funds anonymous and who anonymous really is but let's keep going. I'm here at Hang the Bankers, and what a very telling website this is. But it says 95% of Greek bailout money went to the European banks. Now, of course, this is talking about the bailouts and, and the bail-ins in Greece. But it says a recent German study just confirmed what 11 million Greeks already knew, that they are a people fully conquered by criminal mega banks and the corrupt politicians and technocrats in their employ. And it says get ready for another epic screw job this summer. But it says from the actual newspaper and the source, which you can go to, I'll leave the link below, some 95% of the 220 billion euros dispersed to Greece since the start of the financial crisis as loans from the bailout mechanism has been directed towards saving the European banks. That means about 210 billion euros was eventually channeled to the Eurozone credit sector, while just 5% ended up in state coffers according to a study by the European School of Management and Technology or the ESMT in Berlin. Europe and the International Monetary Fund or the IMF or another alphabet soup have in previous years mainly saved the banks and other private creditors. They have concluded the report published yesterday in German newspaper Handelsblatt but ESMT director Jörg Rachal told the financial newspaper that the bailout packages mainly saved the European banks. The economists who took part in the study have analyzed each loan separately to establish where the money ended up and concluded that just 9.7 billion euros or less than 5% of it actually found its way into the Greek budget for the benefit of citizens. So why did it go to the banks? I wonder why that is, but it goes on to say this is something that everyone suspected, but few people actually knew. That has now been confirmed by the study, and you can come here to check out the study on your own time. So why does this, what does this have to do with Anonymous, and why does all of this relate? Because what Anonymous is funded by the Jewish Zionists, the banking cartel, they are controlled opposition. That is who Anonymous is. Not only that, but it's interesting, like I said earlier, they're hacking everywhere, and they're they're hacking and going after every single bank except the Federal Reserve and Monsanto and the Zionist Rothschild controlled banks. Oh, they're, they, they're making sure not to touch those banks. Not only that, we know they're controlled opposition, but what else? We also know that this is all practicing and staging for the government to plan the EMP and stage an EMP, which they're getting ready for even as we speak. And this is another way that they're that they is in the elite and the government and the Zionists are planning for a bank shut down through bail-ins and banking glitches. I've done several videos on banking glitches as well as bail-ins because they're getting ready and testing for the new world order. That is what they're getting ready for. And they're practicing and getting everything ready, but they're doing it through controlled opposition and using anonymous to do it in order to get ready and fulfill the plans of the new world order. Remember, Ikerus, which I just talked about, what? Rising out of the ashes. That is what what that symbolizes. Please seek Yahuwah and his true son Yahusha so that you can be ready to stand in that evil day because it's
it's only going to get worse from here. And I hope you're seeing that with both your eyes open. This is Truth Unveiled here saying, Shalom.